Hello everyone. Uh, welcome back to Elite Expertise YouTube channel. So today I'm going to uh, discuss a few things about the Canada PBC exam. So many candidates have been asking like what are the steps which are involved to become a pharmacist in Canada and what are the documents that are required and so on. So today I got a chance to make a full length video on how to uh, do our document evaluation and how to uh, sit for the Canadian PBC exam. So today we have uh, Shama with us. Uh, Shama is uh, one of the Canadian pharmacists. She has cleared all her PBC uh, exams and she's currently registered pharmacist and she's practicing in uh, Canada. So welcome Shama. So welcome to Elite Expertise YouTube channel. Hi. Shama, can you, uh, you please let us know about your Canada PBC journey? Sure. Um, my Canada PBC journey actually started in the year 2020. So okay. we were, uh, we were, we both were working in uh, United States, uh, and then due to my husband's job, we had plans to move to Canada. Canada. So I started my PBC journey in the year 2020. Okay. Uh, so after 2020, I had to take a pause in my PBC preparation because again there was some change of plans and obviously we did not uh, move to Canada. We were uh, oh. we were still continue working in United States. So yeah. I wrote, I gave my evaluating exam in 2020, but then I took a break and then I resumed my PBC process in the okay. year 2023. In 2020. Okay, yeah. then okay. Yeah, uh, it's a bit interesting. So uh, Shama, like as most of the candidates have been asking me, like what are the steps which are involved uh, to write the first part of the Canadian evaluating examination? So what is the first step that we need to do to uh, sit for this exam? Can you please okay, uh, so, you can explain it? What... Yeah. So the very first step for any international graduate, so anybody mm -hmm. who is graduated outside Canada, they have to enroll in pharmacist Gateway Canada. So okay. they, they have to create a profile and register with uh, pharmacist Gateway Canada. Then they will receive a NAPRA ID. So that will yeah, be the okay. first step. Okay. So it means that the first step is they need to open uh, like they need to create a profile with the pharmacy gateway in Canada and after creating the profile like they will receive the NAPRA ID. And That's how much does it cost to uh, create a profile with the pharmacy gateway Canada? So there is a registration fee somewhere around 300 to 400 dollars that okay, they have okay. to pay to get registered with pharmacist gateway Canada. Okay, so when once they make the payment and uh, when once they uh, get registered with the uh, gateway, then they will get the NAPRA ID. Yeah, and correct. with this yeah. NAPRA ID, they can proceed for uh, booking for the examinations with the PVC. So uh, the NAPRA ID is the number allotted to a candidate, which okay. they will use to do document evaluation with PVC. So okay. you cannot do your document evaluation if you don't have a NAPRA ID. NAPRA ID okay okay sure okay sure uh, like if your candidate has already uh, done uh, like they have got registered with uh, gateway and they have got the snapper id then what is the next step that they need to do okay so once you get an app id then you have to apply for document evaluation through pbc so they okay. are basically evaluating our undergraduate degree in pharmacy and okay. they will give us a uh, certification of qualification saying that mm -hmm. our credentials are equivalent to a Canadian degree. Okay, okay. So for document evaluation step, uh, for Canada, it still accepts the four years of bachelor degree, right? That is correct. So PEBC is okay. like a, a national body of pharmacy who will evaluate it. So they will evaluate only the under, undergraduate programs. Even if you have a master's, they don't evaluate it. So if you have a four year undergraduate degree in pharmacy, you are eligible to apply for the document evaluation. For the document evaluation. Yeah, like similar to that of the Australian CAPS, uh, even mm -hmm. Australian APC, Australian Pharmacy Council, they won't accept, uh, like they, they won't uh, comment anything on the master's or any other higher degree. So they just oh. uh, comment only on the uh, Bachelor of Pharmacy, yeah. that is the uh, B Pharmacy. Yeah. So it's nice to know about it. And uh, what is the, like, what are the documents which are required uh, to get evaluated uh, to sit for the PBC exam? So 
So first you need to send a transcript uh, from your university to PBC. That should be sent directly from uh, university to PBC. Okay. And if yeah, that will be the first step. So then even if 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 you have a registration in any any country, in like in your home country, you are registered as a pharmacist. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you might have to send a licensing statement from the pharmacy regulatory body in your home country directly to PBC okay. too. Yeah. But um, if uh, you don't have an active license, you can always give an option like this is licensing statement is not applicable because I don't have an active license. Okay. Um, yeah. Those are the two steps that you have to do first. So once the PEBC have all your documents received, they will request uh, further documentation from you like the government issued photo ID and an application form filled and signed by you. Uh, then you have to pay a registration fee through the PEBC website so that's the problem yeah okay then so the first step is like we need to send our uh, transcript from the university so that is mm -hmm. physical uh, copy should be sent directly from the uh, university uh, in a sealed mm -hmm. envelope and mm -hmm. then we need to send uh, like our licensing certificate from our state pharmacy council like in mm -hmm. india if, if a candidate is uh, from india then mm -hmm. they need to uh, send their uh, licensing certificate they need to organize from the state pharmacy council so these two are the important one and for the photo id like we can send our passport i yeah. guess so. so we can send our yeah. uh, copy of the passport and then we also need to fill the application form and we need to send that application form so yeah. these are the basic documents which are required uh, for evaluation uh, step mm -hmm. and shaman like when we are submitting the documents for evaluation do they also ask a good standing certificate from our state pharmacy council in case if we are uh, currently registered and uh, if you are practicing in india or any other countries so will they also ask to submit a good standing certificate so that's the licensing statement that i mentioned like that is sent okay. directly to pbc if you have that an active be. license but in case okay. your license was not renewed or you had don't have have an active license you still have an option to say it is not applicable in your case okay then okay yep sure and like uh, once after submitting all the documents uh, how long do they take to uh, evaluate the documents and uh, within how many uh, within how many months will get the eligibility to sit for the pbc exam okay so once pbc receive all your documents they will okay. make sure everything is in place so if, if everything is according to the pbc standards then they will start evaluating your document then it can take anywhere from two to three months uh, but if uh, anything is missing on your document, say if you're one of your transcriptors missing the seal from the university or something like that, then there is okay. a chance for the PEBC to reject and the process can take longer. So okay. the time frame actually starts when PEBC have all your documents in hand. Okay. So roughly we can say at least around two to three months time, the case yes. officer uh, will take that, the time yes. to evaluate uh, the documents. Okay, yeah. so once after uh, getting the document evaluation done and uh, we'll get the eligibility to sit for the uh, PBC evaluating exam. So mm -hmm. the first step is to write the evaluating exam. So in order to write the evaluating exam, so most of the candidates are asking that where they need to go and sit for this exam. Because uh, till 2019, uh, there was a condition that in order to sit for this evaluating exam, either they need to travel to Canada or to London to take the exam because uh, there, there were no other centers available uh, all over the world. So how about the situation now? The situation changed, uh, changed since in the year 2020 when all the pandemic started. Uh, okay. The PEBC started conducting exams outside Canada and they also launched something like a remote proctoring where we can write our exams from home. So okay. either you can do it through Prometric centers in your uh, country or okay. the, you can do it through remote proctoring from your home. From your home. Okay. So this is a very good advantage with the PEBC exam. So now as they are allowing to uh, allowing the remote proctoring system, it means that we can take the exam by sitting in our home. So only thing what we need is just a computer, webcam and a good internet. Uh, then we can do it from our home itself. So we need not to travel to any uh, other countries to take this exam. So it's the, uh, it, it's the good thing about the PVC at the moment. Then 
uh, the final question like when once after clearing the first part of the pbc exam that is the evaluating exam mm -hmm. so what is the validity for this exam so uh, like will there be any validity for this exam or will there be any certain uh, limit that we need to move on to the next exams that is the qualifying exams and to clear those exams as well so um there is no validity or deadline for evaluating exam okay. but uh, the document document evaluation is valid only for 5 years so once you're done with your document evaluation you have only 5 years to clear the evaluating okay. exam however okay. evaluating exam doesn't have any validity or deadline okay so it means that when at the first step when we do the document evaluation we'll be having 5 years time to clear evaluating exam and the qualifying exams and uh, to clear all the pvc pathways that is all the exams and then get the certificate pvc certificate yeah okay okay shama so thank you so much thanks for sharing uh, all this information with us i hope um, most of the candidates i met how got a good information about how to uh, proceed and what are the steps that are involved uh, to sit for this uh, pbc exam so thank you so much and uh, thanks for watching this video guys and uh, stay tuned with us uh, and we will bring a lot of other information that uh, what are the other next steps which are involved in the pbc examination so thank you so much you're welcome